Denver Nuggets are one win away from their first ever NBA title. Our approach has to be that we're down 3-1. They're desperate, we have to be more desperate. They're hungry, we have to be hungrier. Love playing in these kind of environments. Everybody's counting us out, we're used to that. But ultimately it has to be decided between those four lines. Our whole season hasn't been easy. We won't quit. We know what the task at hand and we know what we can do. One more, yeah. We didn't come this far to stop playing now. If we're going to be locked in and ready to go, and it's just going to be a game that we need to win. Welcome to NBA Today, presented by Xfinity Mobile. And the whole squad is here. Zach Lowe, Malika Andrews, Richard Jefferson, Kendrick Perkins holding it down in Denver. And my friends, before we dive into this game a little bit more, we need to check in on a developing story. And for that, we bring in our senior NBA insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, because Woj, Tyler Hero hasn't played since game one of the first round when he broke his hand against the Milwaukee Bucks. His status has been a major question mark that has loomed over the finals so far. What is the latest on his return to the floor? Yeah, Malika, Tyler Hero's status has finally changed today. The Heat upgraded him to questionable this morning, and I'm told uh, that Tyler Hero is expected to suit up and give it a try here in game five. Listen, there's still soreness in that right hand that was surgically repaired after fracturing it all the way back in mid-April against the Bucks in game one uh, of that first round conference, uh, Eastern Conference series. But they are up against it in Miami, uh, down 3-1. And tonight, and barring a setback of some sort between now and tip-off, you know, the expectation is Tyler Hero Average 20 points a game for this Miami team. We'll see what he can give this team. Without him, uh, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, they have really struggled. Uh, only 12 points in the last two games combined. They missed 27 of 31 shots, missed uh, 15 of 17 three-pointers. So anything Tyler Harrell could give them, uh, it might be something to help uh, extend this Miami season. Uh, but we'll know as he gets closer to tip-off tonight how much, if any, he can give this Miami team. But upgraded to questionable, and the expectation is uh, Tyler Hero is going to try and play. Their third leading scorer in the regular season. Woj, thank you so much. Please do not go too far. But, Richard, we're talking about the finals. We're not talking about the first round of the playoffs. What do you expect from Tyler Hero? How tough is it to come back at this point? No, it, it's extremely tough. It's extremely difficult. One of the things that, you know, I made the analogy of that, hey, look, the first round is like the suburb, driving nice and slow, country road. Second round, okay, you're now on a major street. Then you get to the conference finals, it's a highway. And then when you get to the NBA finals, it's an Autobahn. There is no <laughs> speed limit. So there isn't, oh, you got one, two shots to ease into your game. You know, we've, we've broken down where like two, three consecutive plays can change the whole dynamic of a game. So for Tyler Hero, it's very, very difficult. That being said, the Heat need help. So a lot of times when you're presented in this opportunity is because they need what you can bring. Yep. But to say that he's going to hit his averages, to say that he would hit like any sort of high level minutes, that's unrealistic. Yeah, I'm worried about him. As far as him coming back in the NBA Finals, uh, I don't know with the altitude and you haven't actually played NBA basketball in what like a month and a half. Mm -hmm. I don't expect much out of him. And here's another thing: I'm willing to see how he's going to affect. The others on the bench, the yeah. guys like Gabe Benson and Kayla Martin, because now all of a sudden they might have to take a lesser role because they have lost two straight and now they're down 3 1. So going into that locker room, you got to make sure you got your vets like Udonis Haslam, Kevin Love, Kyle Larry, making sure that those young guys keep their mindset right no matter what it is because Tyler Hero coming back, he's going to play. And that means somebody else is going to have to sacrifice. So we're essentially talking about two months off here, Zach. So if you're Eric Spolstra, how are you using Tyler Hero in this game five? Well, first you have to bring him off the bench, obviously. Like Perk said, he's not going to play his normal minutes a lot, anything like that. I do like the idea of the Heat thinking we got to get as much shooting on the floor as possible. They've scored 95 or fewer in three of these games. They're just not scoring enough to keep up with the Denver scoring machine. And Tyler Hero can shoot and dribble and make pull-up shots, the kind of shots they need in this series. But I think it's going to have to be brief 
and I think the hook is going to have to be quick because Woj said the word soreness, and that makes me nervous because it's soreness in the hand that he dribbles and shoots with. And this is the NBA Finals. This is season on the line, on the road, at altitude. And like RJ said, two turnovers that lead to two Denver threes or a yep. fast break dunk and a three, that could be the whole game. That That's where we are. So I think it's it's okay to test them out. But if it's not if it's not looking good, you, you pull it back. And by the way, credit to Tyler Hero for trying. Like right. that's the, like your hand being sore in the NBA Finals, like that's a tough ask for him to do. If you're the Denver Nuggets, what is the mindset that you need to go in and close this out with? Well, one, you got to make sure each individual player, make sure their household is right. Because remember, you got your parents in town, you got your grandparents in town, you got your great uncles, your great aunties. <laughs> and if you have a significant other or a wife, they got their family in town and at your house is going down. They got the groceries on the stove. They got the alcohol somewhere. And so you have to make sure that you have the right mindset to say, you know what? Somebody else needs to handle that. Now, when you get to the arena, you're gonna pass, you're gonna pass up the Larry O trophy. You're gonna see the champagne there. And then now all of a sudden, you have to make sure that you keep the right the right mindset to say, just because we're at home, yeah. just because we're up 3-1, that we're not going to win this game. The game is one between the lines. We got to make sure that we lock in and make sure that we focus because it's hard. I remember game seven. It's certain finals that you remember. I remember game seven when I was injured. We was up 14 in the fourth quarter in the Staples Center. I'll smoke and that. I walked to the back and the champagne was there. They was ready to roll it out. They was ready to give us the goggles. And then all of a sudden, I went back there with two minutes to go, and the champagne was on the other side of the <laughs> arena. So, I mean, you have to make sure that you stay focused, you stay locked in, because, again, this is the hardest game. This is going to be the hardest game for the Denver yep. Nuggets. Well, and that's why, you know, Michael Malone, we we did a shoot that we aired on NBA Today with the Larry O'Brien trophy, skydiving, the boat. We drove it to the arena, and it was coming into the arena at the same time that the Nuggets players were arriving. And all the security, all the NBA staff were like, make sure that the Nuggets players don't see this. Michael Malone has been very specific about not letting that happen before it happens. I know, Richard, you're making a oh, face. Man, it's like, well, based off of all of his experience in these situations, he wants to make sure that none of it. No, I'm joking. Based on his work. No, no, I'm saying, I'm, no, it's not wow. a, it's not a shot. Today. I'm saying you want to see it sometimes. You want to see what's attainable. We've done a million promos with guys looking at it, sure. but I get it. I get it. It's not a shot. I'm just saying. Sometimes you want to see what you're going after, well, right? Yeah. You want to see what you're fighting for. And if it's right there, maybe it'll perk you up a little bit. But if that's what – and listen, I trust in the way that he motivates his team. They're up 3-1 in the finals. Let's go to the opposite side now because you've also been in the situation that the Miami Heat finds himself win, staring at a massive 3-1 deficit. So what does their mindset need to be? Well, well look, their mindset is like, look – I, I say this, when we lost or when we were able to win in 2016 and Draymond ended up uh, getting suspended in that one, we all know that that was a pivotal moment. Yep. And it was like, yo, we needed some help and we got some help in that moment. That gave us life. I think Tyler Hero coming back can bring life, even if it's 1%, 2%, because the fractions are so small. You, any opportunity that you get to say, oh, we have life, Tyler's back. If we win one, he'll be better in game two. If we can win another one, he'll be better in the next game. Uh, but ultimately, I... I, I I think that that's what it is for them, but I think they're going against a force in Denver that is well coached, that has the best player on the court at all times, and I think it's just going to be a lot for them. I expect both teams to be ready tonight. We know Miami is never, ever going to quit. They could be down six games to one, and they're coming out to win the next game. And I think Denver, that game two was their wake-up call of, we can't even take three minutes off yes. in this series because they will punish us. If you open the door a little bit, they smash it open with the sledgehammer. I think they're focused and locked in and ready. So I expect both teams to come out really kind of primed for this game. It's a little bit scary to think that it doesn't seem like Denver has put together a perfect 48 yet. It's coming. It feels like this has to be the night that they do it. Because listening to Jimmy Butler yesterday when he's talking about we just have to win three before they win one. They don't care what we pick up here. They don't care what you say. They don't care what I say. They don't care what history says. They are coming in tonight like their season depends on it and like they are going to get I this hope they game kill five. What the film <laughs> <laughs> so, beating the odds, that's just what Miami does. They are here in the finals as the eight seed. They beat the one seeded Bucks in the first round. That was the fifth largest series upset since the merger. And along the way to the finals, the Heat have won 10 games as the underdog. That's the most in the last 30 seasons. I mean, like Eric Spolstra said, 
this is when they play their best, when their backs are up against the wall. And the Heat, they upset the Celtics, as we know, in the East Finals. That was the third biggest upset in the Conference Finals or NBA Finals in the last 35 postseasons. That's according to Sports Odds History. Which brings us to tonight. Once again, they find themselves as the underdogs. They enter the game as nine-point underdogs, according to Caesar Sportsbook. That's familiar territory for them, though. You can see here, they've already won twice this postseason when that was the spread. So as a train is coming underneath them. Multiple set, trains. I want to bring Monica McNutt into the conversation because, Monica, I, did you guys see her on first take this morning, on Get Up this morning? She was saying <laughs> that the Miami Heat are going to win this game. So please, my friend, tell us what needs to happen for the Heat if they are going to force a game six. All right, what's up, y'all? Y'all look great out there in the Mile High City. Um, here's the thing about inconsistency. You got some highs, you got some lows, you're never level. The Heat have been terrible in the last two games. We can point to the three-point shooting, we can point to the turnovers in game three. They just haven't had it, but we've seen them show up with it. I just think there's entirely too much pride, too much culture within this organization. I think they're gonna come out with the physicality that we saw in game two, and literally, their backs are against the wall. And I totally understand Coach Michael Malone and Nikola Jokic talking about they need to play like they are the team that is down 3-1, but they're not. The Heat doesn't, the Heat don't have to manufacture this urgency, and so I just think they're not gonna go out with three consecutive terrible games. I think they find a way to send this thing back to Miami. Not a ton of basketball knowledge on that one, but I just believe in them. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.